Roswell Flight Test Crew here today to look at the Connex Pro Site. Now, this is the first HD FPV system designed specifically for multi rotor racing. Let's take a look. So, let's see what's inside the box. So, the box itself. This is the receiver and ground station unit. And you'll notice on top there are places for five antennas. So, on the side here, we have an indicator light on top. So there's an indicator light here, which is not in the documentation, although it says REC. Hmm. We have a menu button, select button, and then a next button for navigation of menus. On the other side, we have a full-size HDMI out. Below that, we have a USB connector for programming and updates and binding. And below that, we have a power connector. And on the bottom, there's a tripod mount. We have manuals. Warranty information in English and French. Also a manual in English and French. And, ooh, sticker. And here we have a transmitter. So here is the transmitter close up. We have several connectors. We have an antenna connector here and one more over there. We have the telemetry port to go to your flight controller over here on the side. Next to that, we have the power connector here. On the side here, we have a USB. That's for binding the unit to the receiver. On the other side, we have the long connector here, which is actually the camera input. Next to that, we have one labeled power. Now, I suspect this is also for a future upgrade of a recorder. Then, of course, we have the mounting points in all four corners. If you use the provided standoffs, you'll have no problem mounting this on your aircraft. And this is the antenna. It's actually quite a clever design. First of all, it's got a little breakaway mount here, so when you crash, it doesn't actually break. It just flexes right back. Uh, there are two antennas in here, one here in the middle column and one on top. And it's set back at an angle, so when your quadcopter is flying in a forward position, it's upright. And of course, if you tilt side to side, one of the antennas is almost always upright, so that's awesome. And of course, the camera itself. So the camera they provide is a high definition camera at 1280 by 720. It's high dynamic range, has low distortion, and comes with a 2.8 millimeter lens, which provides a 105 degree viewing angle. And it's a wide aspect ratio, 16 by nine, of course. Connex suggests not replacing the lens, but if you want to, it's an S-mount. If we decide to buy a new lens for it, it is a third inch CMOS sensor, so make sure you get a megapixel compatible lens. The camera also has some secret sauce in there to help eliminate that wide angle distortion. Here we have an accessory kit with all the required cables to hook it up. Inside the accessory and cable box, we have standoffs and mounting screws for the transmitter, mounting screws for the antenna, a power cable for the transmitter, a power cable with a ground station with an XT60 connector on it, an anti-vibration mount for the camera, a standard USB-A to micro-B cable, the proprietary cable to connect the camera to the transmitter, a standard OTG cable. We have two telemetry cables one for CC3D and one for a NAS32. Here we have five receive antennas. This is a mounting bracket for the ground station. And for mounting, it's as simple as just clipping in the uh, pro site receiver and attaching it to the back of your radio. Ah, last but not least, an HDMI cable. And now into setup. I've laid the pieces out here to show how it sets up. It's actually quite a clean installation. So here we have all the wires plugged in. So basically here's the transmitter, which hooks to the camera and the flight controller, the antenna, and of course power. On the ground station, we'll just have this receiver here, power, and out HDMI to a screen. And that's it. So now that everything's hooked up, you should just be able to power the system on and it comes pre-bound so it'll just work. If it doesn't, all you have to do is connect these two wires between the two units, they'll bind automatically and you're good to go. You can tell that when applying power, you'll have a small green light and then when the link is established, you'll have a second green light. And should you crash your quadcopter and break one of these components, you can order individual pieces on B&H. So next up, let's take a look at the image quality. This first image will be at the HQ mode, so 30 frames, 720p. And the image quality is spectacular. It's really sharp. Close up, far away, color is rendering is awesome. It adjusts pretty well to light, too. If I take it, the camera away from this here and move it on myself, hello, uh, it changes pretty rapidly from the white light behind me back to this. So 
I'm pretty impressed with how good the quality of this thing is, considering how small and convenient it is. Next, we have the 72060i mode. So, higher frame rate, much better response time, and it's a little bit grainier, actually, to be expected because it's being converted on the receiver and to 60p. What we have is an earlay signal. It's got a little bit less resolution, as you can see here reading these texts right there, but the response time is nice and fast. The good thing about this is this closely mimics that of a normal FPV analog system, so much better response time and the digital signals are very, very clean still. No static I can see here. Of course, we're not that far from the receiver, and of course, it responds very rapidly. Hello to movement. There we go. So if you want to record your video, you'll need a, one of two things, either a, a standalone recorder like this Atmos here, but they start at several hundred dollars, or here, this is a Hapage game recorder. It has real-time pass-through. You need a laptop plus this, and between $152, you've got yourself a recorder. Good to go. To interact with the unit to change settings and uh, frequencies and such, you will need either a pair of goggles or a screen hooked to the unit. Reason being, most everything is done through the on-screen display, using these little buttons here on the side of the receiver, or a smart device like a tablet or iPhone. So for this part, we're going to install the app on our brand new Note 7. Okay, we'll use an iPad. Now, I'm going to launch the ProSight app. Once connected, you can control the receiver through these little motions here, so this is going to change the on-screen display options. And below, we can change our regulation, FCC versus HAM. So that changes our power from 25 milliwatts to 200 milliwatts, if you have a HAM license. And you can change your frequencies below here, automatic, or you can choose bands manually. Again, something to keep in mind, while using the app, you still need to have a monitor because you can't see what you're interacting with with the app, unless it's just changing frequencies. And one last thing in regards with the on-screen display. If you want to change the name in the upper left-hand corner of your screen, you need a laptop installed with the firmware software from ProSight. So now for a latency test. The unit claims 26 milliseconds on the 30p mode and 10 milliseconds on the 60i mode. We'll take a look and see. Now what we've got here is a laptop running timecode and a monitor. We're going to do two things. One, check the monitor's latency. Then secondly, run the monitor from the camera watching the same timecode and film that using a GoPro in high speed. Then we'll know what the latency is. So for our control, we rolled timecode at 30 frames a second. We filmed it in high speed and compared the results in the camera. The little screen we have is about one frame latency. Next, we film the timecode with the pro site and watched it in the video in the high speed. And in high quality mode, we had about a one frame latency also, which is about what you would expect, considering it's rated at 26 milliseconds. So here we repeat the test in the high speed mode and we are unable to detect any latency at all from the pro site. For our last test, we're gonna compare our analog FPV system to the pro site by popping this balloon and watching it back in high speed. Safety first. First, the pro site. That's fast. And here we have the analog FPV system. So as you can see by the high speed video, very little difference in latency between the digital system and the analog one. So to test the Connects Pro Site, we've wired it up on Raven here. We figure she's a lot like a racing quad. She's got no GPS installed, a fully charged battery lasts for about five minutes, and she has propellers. However, what sets her apart from her little brethren is she's already been doing this for about six years. So you can see here, Tekkenstein's already got the Pro Site wired up on Raven. The cables it came with weren't large enough to disperse the parts over the whole aircraft, but they're all here. The camera, the transmitter, and the antenna array. And here we've got the ground station. We're running it off an old LiPo battery here in the field. As you can see, we've got all five antennas attached, and I'm gonna be watching the FPV feed on the Eoshin Goggles 1. All right, so we've been flying Raven for years and years now, and I have to tell you, she has never looked better. It is just so crystal clear, and there is no breakup at all, which is a big change from conventional analog FPV flying. It's just so nice and clean and clear. I guess I'd have to say, it's like when we went from old tube TVs, 
you know, an analog to, uh, to HD. I mean, it's that kind of change. So it, it's pretty impressive. It definitely, definitely makes a, a real difference. Now, I will say that when we hook these same goggles up to the uh, light bridge on the Inspire one, the image was a little better, only a little better, but of course it wasn't real time. There was that half second of latency in here, and this, the video is coming back real time, which gives you a lot more confident to fly FPV and really commit to the goggles, and uh, <laughs> it's a lot of fun. So that was our look at the Connects Pro site from Amimon. Hope you're watching, see you next time. All right. Why well, say? <laughs> what do you got? Oh, hey. Hey, hey. For this last test, we want to compare a conventional FPV rig with the ProSight and see how it looks. Oops. <laughs> good boy. That's a good boy, Connor. <laughs> Only two balloons were heard in the name of science. <laughs> this is our newest member of Roswell Flight Test Crew. <laughs> And one final thing with the on-screen display. If you want to change your name in the upper left-hand corner, you'll need a laptop installed with the ProSight firmware software laptop dead. Whatever. <laughs>